98 or 99 percent of people fail because they fail. hello guys my name is karina welcome to my channel how are you today so today's video is going to be super super important and it is the five most common fba mistakes and I really wanted to make this because these are so, so easy to fall into. And I literally almost fell into all of them pretty much every single time at least once. And I wanted to share my personal experience and also let you guys know what to kind of watch out for before you decide to start anything and before you actually, you know, just do anything and watch out for these things because they can literally make or break your business. They can make you feel discouraged or they can just prolong your like improvement in the business model and, you know, slow you down from actually doing what you want in life. So I wanted to share them with you. So the first one guys, and I have my handy dandy whiteboard over here. I thought it'd be kind of cool to bring it out and do some videos on it. But the first one, and I will write it down so you guys remember it is product research okay this one is super super important and by the way guys um i was going to be a doctor so you have to forgive my horrible handwriting because that just comes from almost being a doctor and i think that's just like the cliche that doctors don't have the best handwriting but anyways product research guys it is literally the whole basis of the amazon business model if you don't have the right product you can kiss any success goodbye. Literally, it is not even funny. Like you can just put out the best product with the, the highest quality product, have a million reviews on it, have amazing professional photography, lifestyle photos, optimization, PPC running to the max, outside traffic ads, like anything. But if the market is not there, the market is not there and you will not succeed. Not only if the market is not there, but if you go into a product that is super, super competitive, then you will not succeed. It is just something that takes time and skill and just hours and hours of putting into it to find the correct and the right product. And it's not brain surgery, okay? It's not rocket science. It's just something that takes practice and eventually you guys will be able to literally look at a product in two seconds and be able to tell if it's the right product or not. If the numbers are there, if the market is there, there's just so many little components that go into finding the right product. But if you don't have this down guys, like your success is not going to happen. Okay. So a lot of people want to rush into it and don't want to put the time and the due diligence into the product research, but that is the number one thing that's going to make or break your business. So literally like 80% of your time should be spent into this. And then once you find the right product, literally everything else is a million, a million times easier. So that is numero one. The second one is pretty much almost as important. Um, oops, but not as crucial as this because if you don't have the right product, there is no business. But if you do have the right product, if you mess this stuff up, this step, you guys, you will still not have a successful product. And let me write this down is your key word. And this is very, very important. A lot of people do not know their main keyword. Okay. And you think, okay, is that really a big deal? For example, you're selling a dog, squishy, chewy toy. Let's, that is like the worst example. I wish I could think of better examples, but say you're selling a squishy, like do dog toy, right? A squishy, like stuffed animal for dogs. So you type in squishy dog toy or squishy, squishy stuffed animal, right? And it looks like the market is amazing. It looks like it's like low reviews, high sales, everything looks perfect. So you go and you buy the, the toy, right? You get a bunch of reviews, you run giveaways for that word, you get on page one for that keyword of the squishy toys, but then guess what? You're not getting any sales. And then you think you, you don't really know what's happening. But what you don't know is that there is another main keyword for it. For example, maybe all of the sales are coming just from dog toys, right? But you didn't know that because you didn't do your research. So you think that your main keyword is one word, but in fact, it's just a less competitive term that yes, other products are ranking for as well, but it's not the one where the main sales are coming from. So when you do product research, and this kind of goes hand in hand, because when you find the right product, you want to make sure that you know the right keyword for that product. Because if you don't know the keyword, again, this will completely mess up your launch. This will completely mess up everything. And you're not even going to be selling it under the most term that gets 
you know, all the sales. So that's not good, obviously. And then here we go. Number three, we're moving through this. I actually remember all these. I don't even have to look at my phone. This one is rushing bad product. Horrible. Excuse the handwriting. Um, and this glare, by the way, it's my, my lighting. So I'm sorry that it's blocking this. But it's, it's pretty late. It's like 10 p.m. right now. That's why... Um, that's why there's like no natural light except for, for that. So I have to put it on. But this, guys, is rushing and having a bad product. Because some markets, if you look at them, the products are horrendous. Like the reviews are subpar. The product is like a flimsy, super flimsy thing from China that costs a dollar. Not that everything that costs a dollar is flimsy, but a lot of things are. And if you go into the market... And you just want to, you know, chop chop and get the product running, which I totally understand because everyone wants to just get started and, and, you know, make income. But if you just do what everyone else is doing and say everyone else has a bad product and you go in and you put out the same exact bad product, it's just going to be like a get money quick, easy come, easy go type situation. What you don't understand is that, well, you, you should understand, you probably do understand, but it's the long term adding value that wins like if you add value to the customer they will be yours they will come back and they will repurchase from you i have customers that literally are like i have an um, email software system that i send automated emails to and it shows me who is a recurring customer and there are so many because you build a brand you know the quality of your product and some products are a lot of them actually won't last forever so they're gonna go back and they're going to be a recurring customer and how do you do that by having a really really good product like why would someone buy your product if you're just releasing something just as flimsy as everyone else it's just not gonna work well so you really want to make sure like you study your market and you know like why would realistically would the person buy my product and why would they buy my product how much better is it because if you do have a bad product sure maybe first you'll get good sales if you can trick them with having a really pretty listing and good reviews and just ranking to the page one but those negative reviews are going to come in eventually and then when that happens like you're just going to be thrown in with everyone else and then all of this time of finding products and investing money is just going to be short-lived it's going to live for one or two months and then you're back at square one basically building completely from scratch and the thing with businesses like you don't really necessarily want to do everything from scratch all the time because that's just way too much effort right and like why would you do that if you can just go all in at once and just put your best in and add value to your customer so that is number three number four i forgot so let me look it up Oh, yes, this is a very, very, very common mistake, okay? And it's quite important. And it's lingering, lingering, okay? I actually know a lot of people that fell into this trap, okay? This is a very, very dangerous zone to fall into, okay? Because especially when you first start out, right, you're just... If you're a newcomer into this, you're super excited, Amazon FBA, what is this? What's the model? You learn it, you take a course, you binge watch videos, you find a product, you do everything. And then there comes a time where there's like weeks sometimes between when you order the product and when it actually gets into Amazon. And if you're not like keeping up with it, if you're not learning, you your excitement might die out. And then when the product actually gets into the warehouse, you're just so burnt out from like not doing anything those type of weeks, all those weeks when you're waiting for it that you just don't really know what to do. And say your product comes in, maybe you get a few reviews and then you're like, okay, I'm not getting any sales. I'm just going to let it be, right? And that is how you lose, okay? If you have done this two steps correctly, if or actually all these three, if you've done your product research, if you know your keyword and you studied the market and you know that this is going to sell, if you didn't rush into it and you actually have a good quality product, then do not linger, right? Because that will completely kill your excitement. It will kill everything and you won't just move forward. And this is the part right here, like between these two steps, is where usually like the money is oh my god this is looks such like bad handwriting but this is literally like seconds away from getting you money and this is i feel like a lot of people a lot of people actually stop here before even getting to this part but a lot of people just fall off here they literally get their product in and they don't do anything they'll get a few sales and they just let it be 
Now sure, sometimes it could be a fluke product and in that case, that's totally understandable. Then you move on and go back to here. But in a lot of cases, like you just need to improve this. You need to rank yourself. You can't just put a product on Amazon and expect it to sell because it's not going to happen. This isn't like the candy aisle when you're about to check in where everyone just buys it, like impulsively. This is like legit. You have to compete. You have to get your product to page one, whichever way that may be. If you're running PPC, if you're doing giveaways, if you have organic traffic or just from other sources of Amazon's doing it organically, like there's different niches. This um, product ranks differently, to be honest. So you, the thing is, if you know it's a good product, don't give up on it that quickly just because you put it up and after two reviews you're not getting any sales don't be surprised you, this is the part where you actually have to put in work and this is like uncomfortable because it, this work is kind of you know it's, it's difficult it's not super easy right you just have to strategize and do it but it's not impossible and like just don't get stuck onto this step and then guys the best for last number five and i think this is like probably like 98 percent of the reason why people fail is this reason okay and this one is very very important just like all the other ones and this is action or lack of to be more precise and literally 98 or 99 percent of people fail because they fail to take action because they look at all of this, they look at the business model, they watch a 20 minute FBA video, how to, how it works. It seems easy and as soon as they open the viral launcher jungle scout extension to do this, it is completely overwhelming. And I am totally with you because it is completely overwhelming the first hours, the first weeks that you open it. And then people don't even, after a few hours, they just unsubscribe or they do this, they find a product and they may even do keyword research, but then when it comes to ordering the product, they can even talk to suppliers, right? It's just every at every little step, someone falls off. But honestly, guys, like you have to carry everything through. You can't just uh, just do product research and quit. It just depends how bad you want it. Like, what are you doing this for, right? You're not doing it to just do it halfway and waste your time and then just close off of it. Like this works, guys. I'm not joking. This works. When I started out, I was completely overwhelmed by all these numbers and literally everything but it literally works. Like you have no idea how gratifying it is to see your first sale. Like when I launched my product and I saw my first sale, I was shocked, okay? Like I was literally like, this cannot be my sale. And then when you see other sales and when you actually see it, like actual income, that's when it actually gets crazy, but it is possible. It's like, it's, it's almost like funny because I compare this to like anything else. When you're in elementary school or anywhere else you're doing harder subjects like math or science and at first it seems hard but you're kind of forced to do it because you're in school and you can't get an F otherwise your parents get like mad at you and you get grounded or whatever and then all the way to college and and your work if you have a job like it's all the same it's all new skills that have to be learned at some point and before that you literally knew nothing just think about that anything in your life before you knew nothing but you were either forced to learn it or you chose to learn it like if you were into music you chose to learn the guitar or the piano school you're pretty much most people are forced to learn the things they do but this is the same thing it gets easier once you know it more and this won't look as overwhelming like this used to be so overwhelming for me this product research but now i love doing it honestly i could sit for hours and hours and that's why i love making product research videos is because i keep like it's just fun for me now because you understand it and the more you understand it the more fun it is and guys like don't be these right here don't be the 98 percent. be the two percent that actually goes and tries and even if your first product fails even if your second or third or fourth or fifth fails this model works i'm not joking i've had failed products okay i've literally had failed products that i launched them i spent all this time energy money it comes into the warehouse i do everything and it fails but do I say, okay, Amazon doesn't work? No, because I've had products that obviously don't fail. And I see people left and right that have extreme success with this as well. So I can't write off the whole model because you have one little failure or a bump in the road. You just keep going. And if you take action, guys, no matter how small, everything just falls into place. No matter how overwhelming it seems, the like bits of this just takes away anything that's like the first step the only way to overcome fear or anything is just to jump straight into it and do it and literally like it's not even as bad as it seems it just seems hard now because you don't really know much about it but let me tell you guys like it is the coolest thing ever so 
these are actually the five biggest mistakes um, of new time Amazon sellers or even actually not even new time Amazon sellers. Sometimes I get stuck in these as well or you're tempted to do so because it's naturally, it's just easier to do the easy thing. But don't be part of the 98% or any of these reasons, guys. And just know that literally like your future is so, so close and everything you want is like just around the corner depending on how much action you put in. But I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this kind of opened your mind of things that you shouldn't be doing and how you can correct the things you are doing. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you ever have any questions, I am always open. You guys can leave a comment. I answer every single one. I answer all my DMs on my Instagram. So if you want to just ask me a super long question or whatever, or have me look at a product, just literally just send me a message and I'm there. And subscribe to my channel if you found this helpful, like this video, um, I post really, really often. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have an amazing, amazing day.